What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Diva Time. Real Talk Diva Time. It's just Real Talk, girl. Okay? So I hope you all are having like, a really great day whenever you're watching this. Today's a great day. It's Tuesday. Y'all know I always do these like a day or two before. So it's Tuesday. It's nice out. I really can't complain about much. I'm going to just be honest. I was supposed to be at the dentist at 9 o'clock this morning and have my tooth extracted, okay? I'm not sure if it's my wisdom or it's the one by the wisdom because I know the wisdom, one of them back there is gone. But girl, let me tell y'all, you ain't never seen somebody so scared of the dentist in their life. Like, I am petrified of the dentist. And I already had, like, a bad experience, okay, already. Like, who hasn't had a bad experience in their life? But for one, my fake tooth broke off. Like, my crown, it broke off, like, months ago. And so I really don't have no tooth there. It was just a crown over a little rice grain. But, you know, I try to get used to being no tooth there. I figured, you know what, I'm going to chew on this side because there ain't no tooth there. I'm just, I'm going to harden my gum. Girl, my gum got inflamed, so swollen, I have to go get an extraction. But I just couldn't do it today. I just really just couldn't do it. Tati wasn't available. She had to take Tato to the doctor. And I just didn't want to go by myself. I just can't go to the dentist by myself. I just can't do it. I'm like petrified of the dentist. I just can't do it. I will do it, but I just can't today. I just couldn't. I just had flashbacks that I was at the dentist like a few years ago and I had to get, I think it was the wisdom extracted. It took them over four hours, four hours and two or three dentists later to get the tooth pulled out. I think they numbed me like eight times. They couldn't get it out. It was broken off. They couldn't get it out. They had to call somebody else. I was there for over four hours. Okay. By the time the dentist came, he was like, I'm sorry, but I can't give you anything else to numb you. We're going to just have to take it out. Girl, I had to live through, endure that pain of them pulling that tooth, that little piece of tooth out. And that was like the worst experience in my life. Like my face was swollen. I just couldn't do it. And it's in that same area. So I'm just like, I'm having like flashbacks. And when the crown broke off, you know what I mean? It just broke off. They must have not did a good, great job. Okay, because when it broke off, it took my little piece of tooth that was with it to hold on. So now I ain't gonna have no tooth back there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like I'm gonna get a bridge, like a like a something. You know, I don't know what you wanna call them. You pop them in your mouth, but I had to reschedule the dentist for Friday because I just couldn't do it. You know, anxiety started taking over. I just was like, nah, I'm not doing this. I can't do this. I cannot do this. And I was really trying to talk myself into it, but girl, I, I've always been scared of the dentist. I just don't like the sound of that machine, that drill. Oh my god, I had to wear headphones. I just can't do it. I just cannot do it. So pray for me because I really need to go and have them remove what's ever left in my gum. But I just, this is the second time that I rescheduled this appointment. Like, and on top of that, on Friday at nine o'clock in the morning, I have to go get a mammogram. So, you know, so first I got to get them, let them squish my titties down. Then I'm going to let them pull my tooth out. What's next? Like, really, like, though, like, what's next? Like, huh, what's up on that girl? Okay. But yeah, keep me in your prayers and thoughts. But anyway, so I did go to the doctors yesterday. Um, you know, my new doctor's office. I love Dr. Rachel. She is so amazing. She's just so caring. And I'm just so happy that I, I went and found her or my daughter found her. And I went and, you know, signed up for her or whatever you want to call it. But she's such a great doctor. And when I go back in three weeks, she'll tell me if she can help me get back on my weight loss journey. Uh, because I used to be on like a regimen through the medical weight loss clinic. It wasn't a shot. It wasn't those um, semi-glutide shots. It wasn't those. I did want to try those, but they were very pricey. And I've seen like a lot of people that haven't had great success with them. Um, and also on top of that, it just, there's a lot of things about it. Like I know everything has side effects, but the side effects for this particular thing, I just really don't want in my body. I don't want to have to go through and I already have enough health issues. So I just figured I will go back on Fentramine, which I did use, you know, I exercised and gave me energy and I exercised and things like that. So I did lose a lot of weight from that and just from exercising. So when I was there yesterday, she did ask me about how I felt about myself because, you know, you have to answer a questionnaire. She asked me, was I depressed? I was like, I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. So, oh, okay, because, you know, you circled, you was, you was, um, disappointed within yourself. Yeah, I'm disappointed in myself, within myself because of the weight that I put on, but I ain't depressed. I ain't depressed about that shit. Like, it's life. That's life. It just, it's just life. You know, you got to do something about it. Either do or you don't, you know? So I have been doing, but it ain't been showing. And I'm about sick and tired of it. So when we started talking about it, I did end up crying because I just felt like, yo, I've been walking every day. I've been walking. I've been watching what I eat and shit. And it's like nothing is helping me. Like, seriously, like, girl, can we please, like, lose some weight, shed some pounds? I'm so tired of being fat. And I'm not even fat, but I'm just so tired of my gut looking like this. Like, I'm tired of being this size already. Like, I know I'm a great person, yada, yada yada all of that good stuff but and i know we have to accept our body and i know this but you know after a while when you do stuff and it doesn't show and pay up it's kind of like you want to give up and that's how i started feeling when i was going to the gym though i should have stayed at the gym but i don't know you guys i just really want to lose some weight and it's nothing that's like why why me why can't i lose this weight what am i walking for what am i doing all of this for so she's ran some tests and hopefully everything comes back great so that way i can get back on my fetch me and i can lose my 
way and I could get back to my happy self. So I am happy. I'm very happy. You know what I'm saying? I'm very happy because look, but I tell you, if you wake up every morning, then you, you good. And I am six feet above ground. Thank the Lord. So I'm blessed and I'm happy about that. But I just want to be healthy. I'm not trying to be a supermodel because I'll never be that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe not. But I just want to be in shape. You understand what I'm saying? I want to look nice and neat in my clothes. And I just want to feel good about myself. I don't give a damn what anybody else feels about me because truly I don't. Okay, I don't care if nobody don't like my size, don't like me. You know, get in line if you don't like me. I'm pretty sure there's a long line of people that don't like me, hate me, or like me. I, it doesn't even matter to me. But I <clears throat> want to do this for myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I just just really want to lose some weight. And I, I don't know what to do. Like, I know, you know, she said, gave me the pep talk to the doctor. Well, you know, when you get older, yeah, I already know all of that shit. I'm not trying to hear that. Okay? Because I see older women that's my age, older than me, and they be smaller. So, what? Hello? But other than that, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to just keep trying this. It's a journey. I guess that's why they call it a journey. But I should... I surely do wish that I could snap my fingers and tomorrow I wake up a little thinner. I don't want to be skinny. I just want my stomach to be gone, you know, and just a little bit, just, just, uh, just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit, but you know, I'll be drinking my water. Thanks to my daughter. Okay. Tati got me this nice cup. Mumsy got me one too for Christmas. This one got a handle on it, which I absolutely love. This shit stay cold as hell. Okay. You can get this from Amazon. However, the ice maker that I got, when she gave me ice from the gas station, like Circle K gas station, the ice be in here for a whole entire day. But when it's ice that you make in your own house, I noticed it don't last as long, but this water be so cold, girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. It be so cold. I drink this water all day long. Refill, refill. But I like it. It's got a nice little spout. You just push it down. It ain't one of those Stanleys because I don't really care about that, but it's $20 on Amazon. Got your little handle. It's a 40 ounce girl. They got them in several colors. This sucker stays cold for like over 24 hours, okay? Mind you, if you get the right ice, okay? If you go to like the, the soda machines to get the ice, girl. And it's free too? Yes. Cheers to cold water. But y'all know what time it is. It's real talk time. It's Wednesday. It's real talk. We're going to chit chat, talk it out. But I just wanted to start off with this video is being sponsored today, sponsored by Dossier. Okay, Dossier. Um, as y'all already know about Dossier Perfume, it is a monthly subscription that you subscribe to, and they are inspired scents, inspired scents from like Dossier and Cabana, Gucci. They are dead smack on. And if they ain't dead smack on 100%, they like 95%, 95.9 or 99.9. They are dead smack on inspired scents for men, women, and unisex. They also do carry candles. I love their scents. I got me a nice little perfume collection going and plus girl i also share the scents too so i also do give some of them away to my daughters because they want to smell good too who don't like to smell good and i want them to smell good. and they also have new scents quite frequently and updated scents too so let's get into this okay girl let's So we're going to start off with our sponsors, which is a dossier perfume. Like I said, it's a monthly subscription. You get charged $29 a month. You can either save it for your purchase or stack it up, or you can go ahead and spend it right away, but it will give you a $29 credit monthly. So that way you can choose what you like. Now there are some new perfumes on here. They do have like a limited collection of New York city collection, which they have out, which I did notice on their website. Um, I didn't get anything from that collection. That I would have had I known it. Cause you know, your girls from NYC. But I'm pretty sure it'll be out for a while. There are five new items in the New York City collection, which includes New York City Flower Market, Snowy Central Park, Independent Bookstore, Street Vendor Cart, and Subway Station while supplies last. This month I got four, and I did get one that one of my subscribers here mentioned to me and stated I should get it. She loved it. Her and her daughter, I think she said, love the smell of this one particular scent. Um, my favorite one, though, from Dossier is, I think it's Floral Fruity Violet. It is a inspired scent by Jador. This one that I was told to try out by one of my divas here is called 
floral marshmallows. So for one, you get your perfumes in these nice little boxes and they all come with these stock cards, which tells you what's in them and what they're inspired by. Girl, let me tell y'all something. Sometimes your girl April be a little bit slow and behind. I did get these perfumes. I tried them out by spraying them on the stock cards. I don't know why I just didn't do that from the jump. Girl, these stock cards smell so effing good from the scent. Floral marshmallow. This one is a inspired scent. It's inspired by Kelani, inspired by the Love Don't Be Shy Eau de Parfum. It smells so good. It has orange blossoms in it, honeysuckle, jasmine, and it also has amber and vanilla must. Now, this is the one thing that I did smell when I sprayed this was like the vanilla in it. That's the main thing that I smell. Just use them as your spray cards. You know, like the ladies in the perfume store? Girl, this has like a very nice scent to it. You know what it reminds me of? It smells like, like vanilla extract, but with a little oomph to it. it. That's the scent that it's giving me. Some of these do come in different sizes. This does come in a 100 milliliter and a 50 milliliter. Floral Marshmallow is where sweet meets seductive. It gives you like this vanilla extract smell. This doesn't smell like vanilla extract, but it gives you like a little bit of a twist to it. You know what I'm saying? You can add three items, get 20% off, plus free shipping. So the so, next one that I have here is Aquatic Peony. I think this one was like one of my favorite too. Yes, because it's inspired by Giorgio Omani. And this one is called Aquatic Peony. This one smells really good to me. I like this one a lot. You know how you have your favorite perfumes and you just spray them all the time? This Aquatic Peony, girl, this smells so good, okay? This smells divine. Like, when I tell you that this smells good, a fruity splash of the sea. It has like this divine scent to it. I really, you know what? I think like Giorgio Armani has like the best perfumes. They have like some very good scents. And the way that Dossier has replicated it, inspired by it, they do a really good job with their preparation and their perfumes because everything smells really, really good. The scents do last though also on your clothing for a couple of days. So just be aware that people will compliment you when you are wearing any of their perfume because you can smell it. These definitely will give you the scent that you're looking for. Aquatic Peony Girl will definitely get you this one. So this scent is inspired by Chanel number no. five and this absolutely smells like a newborn baby. Okay, you ever smell like a newborn baby? They smell good, they smell like lotion, they smell like baby powder. They got like this really clean, fresh scent to them that nobody can top. It don't matter how much perfume you put on and how many times you scrub your adult self, you're never gonna smell like a newborn baby. Newborn babies have like this new smell, like a new car, but a new baby smell, and they always smell good. This one is a Chanel number no. five Inspire, and this is called Floral Aldehydes. I think that's how you say it, Aldehydes, but girl, this, Chanel number no. five been out for ages, okay? And who don't love Chanel number no. five? I've had Chanel number no. five countless times. It reminds me of like a fresh scented baby, but it also reminds me of something someone mature would wear. Like someone really mature would wear this. I don't really see like a lot of young people like in their 18s and 20s wearing this perfume. But I mean, listen, if you want to smell like a brand new fresh baby, then definitely get this one right here, which is floral aldehydes. This scent is a sophisticated powdery veal. And this is what I'm talking about. It smells like, like a baby powder, like a fresh baby. And then my last one, which is a bigger size bottle, which is called Fruity Almond. And this is one of their bigger bottles. You can definitely order some of your favorites in this particular size. This one is inspired by Carolina Hera, which is Good Girl Ubi Perfume. Now, honestly, this reminded me of like a unisex scent. It first, when you first smell it, it gives you like this masculine scent, like a masculine cologne. And then it kind of like dies down into more or less a feminine scent. But it's in this huge bottle, which is great because if you love like a certain perfume, definitely get in a big one. You know, I have like my favorites from uh, Dosia, like I said, and it just, it reminds me of like a masculine scent in the beginning. And then it just kind of like dies down to a feminine scent, but very masculine to me in the beginning. I was not the only one that felt that way. My daughter, Nay, was in here smelling them with me. And she said the same thing too, that it smells masculine. So this is supposed to be like a playful, seductive scent. It's a very strong, vibrant scent. And it does come in the 50 milliliter as well as the 100 milliliter. So the 100 milliliter is $49 and the smaller one is still 29. This smells really good though. You know how you get these perfumes that really, really last a long time? Like I have my favorites that I definitely love and it doesn't all have to be from Dosia, but I have favorite perfumes that are like really, really strong. And I love them when they're like that because I know I can smell them and everybody else can. But I will leave all of the information down below for Dosia and their perfumes, monthly subscription, $29. 
You cannot beat that. And they also always come in these cute little boxes. So that way your fragrances are protected as well as they also do have home scents as well on their website. I've never tried one of the home scents out, girl. I love perfumes. And then, you know, I have my particulars about the home scents. So let's just get into this real talk. Thank you, Dosia. I'll leave everything down below for you guys. Let's get into this real talk. Okay, girl? Okay, you guys. So let's get into this real talk. Now, y'all know I be trying to mind my business. I, I, I really try to mind my business a lot. Some things that people ask me, I just don't really be too fond of. But, you know, I will still try to answer them to my best of my ability and my knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't really try to be too judgmental of people. Though sometimes you do have to be judgmental of people because some people will really, really like, they. some people just be doing too much. But, girl, sometimes, like I said, I be trying to mind my business out here. You know, I'm, girl, I'm good at minding my business. So I think I am. But my daughter will tell you otherwise that I'm not. But, you know, it is what it is, girl. So let's just jump into this. Now, y'all already know, if you want a real talk, Go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject, subject line Real Talk, or you can also use my Real Talk email, which is aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. And also please put in the subject line Real Talk so that I know that's a real talk. If you want to go ahead and change your name in this email, please do say so. If you want me to use your real name, please do say so. And that's about it. This is my opinions. I'm not giving you any advice, so just take it as my opinions and my opinions only. What would I do or how I would handle things? So we're just going to jump into this Real Talk, y'all. First, let me take a sip of water. Um, what do you think of this? Because this is what she titled it in her subject line. Hi, Miss April, Divas and Devils. Thank you in advance for reading this. I hope you are able to get to this email, and I appreciate your time and effort that you put in all your videos. I appreciate you appreciating me, and thank you. Miss April, please call me Carmen. So I have been married to my husband for 11 years. We met in college. We have two kids, and we live in Florida. We both have great jobs. And I thought we had a great relationship and a great marriage. I thought we had great sex life, you know, great marriage, great relationship. But I'm now confused and would love your input on poly relationships. The reason I ask this is because my husband has been bringing up the topic far too many times. Him or myself have never been in a poly relationship. I don't know if he wants it for the three-way sex or really want it to be like an official relationship thing. I'm really not into sharing minds like that. I like I don't mind getting freaky with my husband, you know, like a three way. But to be in an everyday committed relationship with him and another woman, I just don't think I'm capable of doing. You know, Miss April, listen, I try to please my husband and make him happy as well as as he does for me. I just don't know what to think of all of this. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? I try to please everyone, make everyone happy that's around me. And I just don't want to ever disappoint anyone. But what is your opinion or what would you do? Thank you, Carmen. First of all, let me just say this, Carmen. I, I'm the same way. I try to please everybody, make everybody happy that's around me. But shit, let me tell you something. I will not fucking do anything that makes me feel uncomfortable, okay? That's the one thing that I'm not out to do. I'm not going to sacrifice my dignity and my pride and my self-respect for nobody's pleasure and happiness. That's one thing I won't fucking do, okay? So let me take another sip of water because I ain't had never nobody ask me this question about what I think about a poly relationship. This is why I be telling you I be trying to remind my fucking business. So Carmen wanted know what should she do about her husband constantly bringing up the fact that he want to be in a poly relationship though neither one of them have ever been in a poly relationship um and she don't know if he just want to have three-way sex um a threesome or do he just really want to be in a committed relationship with another woman and his wife now she asked me what would i do hold up first of all she said i don't mind getting freaky with my husband you know like a three-way but to be committed every day in a relationship with another woman, I just don't think I'm capable of it. So I don't really know. Have you ever had one with him, a three-way or not? Because it sounds like you did. And then it sounds like you don't. And then I'm trying to figure out how old are these kids? Because you said that y'all been married for 11 years. Y'all met in college. Y'all have two kids. However, the kids may not be young and then they may be young. Just because they've been married 11 years doesn't mean they haven't been together longer than that. So we really don't know how old they are, the children. But I'm going to just say this. I think when people have children and they decide to be in a poly relationship, I think they really should do things after their children are grown out the house. That's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? That's just me because why would you want to confuse your children? Like, I know that it's not an everyday standards way of living, but that's what y'all want to do. You know what I'm saying? That's the freaky side of y'all that y'all want to do. Don't involve your children in it. It'd be so many messed up relationships out there in this world. And people don't realize, like, what you do in front of your children around them, that really can, you know, like, haunt your child later on in life. You can embarrass your child, and you really don't realize that you're embarrassing your child. So, me, personally, my personal opinion on poly relationships is this. I think that it's... 
you know what? This is just my opinion. And if anybody's watching that has a poly relationship, you need to do what's best for you. This is what I would do best for me. There's no way on God's green earth would I be into any poly relationship with anybody because I'm not about to be allowing you to be sleeping with my man. Okay, while I'm sitting in the next room, we're not going to get freaky deaky every freaking night. And a lot of them say that it's not for the sex. A lot of them say that you want to be in a committed relationship. But I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. Like, I feel like one man is enough for me. And I feel like one woman should be enough for a man. If you really love her, then she should be more than enough for you. I don't feel like you need to add anybody to the equation. Um, it's just a lot of different now. You know, like certain things wasn't spoken of like many, many years ago. And now it just seems like the world has gone upside down, back around the corner in the mountains and who God knows where else they ended up at. But it just seemed like a lot of people have been beamed up by Scotty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Scotty has beamed a lot of people up to Mars and he ain't letting them down with their way of thinking. Now, if that's what you want to do, you want to have a three-way with your husband, that's on your business. That's cool. Do do what you makes you happy. But if you don't want to be in a committed relationship with him and another woman, then why can't you just tell him that? Girl, let me tell you something. I don't do nothing that I don't want to fucking do. Okay? I don't give a damn who you are. Okay? I am a people pleaser and I'm not a people pleaser because the, the term people pleaser, it sounds like you're an ass kisser and I ain't about to kiss nobody's fucking ass. But I do like to make sure that everybody is satisfied and happy. I don't like to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't really like to upset anybody. Not on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Not purposely. So it's not really that I'm a people pleaser, but I just like to treat people the same way that I would want to be treated in return. That's me. However, I'm not about to ask nobody to do nothing that I wouldn't do. Okay, that's one thing I wouldn't do. So how would you think your husband would say or feel if you went up to him and said you want to be in a poly relationship with him and another man? How do you think he would feel about that? Because I guarantee you he would not fucking like that shit at all. See, men and women are two different species and it's unfortunate, but we are really two different species. We think and act alike. No, we do not. We do not think alike. We do not act alike. Okay, we don't even feel alike. Sometimes we are totally different species and I get that that's okay. But here's the thing. What he wouldn't accept from you, then you should not accept from him. If he wouldn't accept you being with two men at a time and sitting there watching you get off to some other man, then why should you allow him to get off to some other woman and, and, and be uncomfortable in the situation? Now, here's the thing. Okay, hold up. If you and your husband agree on having a menage a trois, a threesome with somebody else, that's fine. That's what y'all agreed on, okay? Get your little freak on. But if y'all is unagreeable on bringing somebody else into the equation, then why bother, Okay. If you are okay with freaking off with somebody with you and your husband, then that's cool. That's your business. But don't put yourself in a situation where you feel very uncomfortable. Like, I don't try to judge nobody. I don't care what you're doing behind your closed doors because the, their doors are closed. And I am not trying to look inside of them, okay? April minds her business. I don't want to be in nobody's sex life, nobody's sex parties, nobody ditty parties, okay? I know how to say no, okay? I do know how to say no. But I don't give a damn if you're my husband or whatever. Like, here's the problem. Some people just... This, this is what I call it, pussy footing around. Like, what I, why I call it pussy footing around? Because you just can't get to the topic. You just can't get to the, the reason. Get to the fucking reason. Tell me why you don't like something. Stop pussy footing around this shit. You've been with your man for 11 plus years. Okay, y'all been married for 11 years. I don't know how long y'all been together. But why do you need to come to me and ask me what's my opinion on it? Personally, my opinion is this. Like I just said, I ain't into no poly relationships. I'm not about to see my man in a relationship with nobody else. And he ain't about to see me in a relationship with nobody else. I'd be damned if somebody gonna make his fucking dinner and, and kiss all up on him the same way I would. I'm just not into shit like that. And I have a look. What's mine is mine. And that's what it is. And that's how it's always gonna be. I don't be into none of this shit like that. But this, this generation is totally different. And I think a lot of people use that excuse of being in a poly relationship as a form of just getting freaky. Okay, or freaking off. Like, just be for real about your shit. Don't have to use a, a nice, exquisite word, the word poly. Use the term, I want to get freaky, I want to freak off, and I want to have a threesome. Don't come to me talking about, oh, you want to have a poly relationship. Be for real about your shit. But there's a lot of people out there that are really into this. To me, that's, listen, what's good for the goose ain't always good for the gander. Okay? I'm going to just be straightforward with you. Some people might say, oh, I'm being judgmental of people who like to. I don't give a fuck what you do. Okay, that's this is my real opinion. I don't give a fuck what you do. And I don't mean you, Carmen. I mean, everybody in a whole anybody. Okay, I don't care. That's your life. It's behind closed doors. You ain't harming me none. My bills are still getting paid. I'm still eating good. Okay. I still got my car. I still got my family. So what you like to do is what you like to do. But I'm entitled to my opinion. And my opinion on poly relationships is like, hell no, no, no. Like it doesn't say that in the Bible. I'm not a holy roller either. But I just feel like some things are just not meant to be. And that's just how I feel about it. There are cultures, religions, you know what I'm saying, that do. Men are married more to more than one woman. That's fine. There's even cults to do that shit, okay? Cults, okay? Cults. And so sometimes I start thinking, like, are these poly relationships like a cult? 
Some of them can be. I've seen brother. What, what is it? I said brother love. I'm thinking about P Diddy. Um, I, I can't. Nature Boy. Nature Boy. I think it was. Um, you know the whole story behind that Nature Boy. I think that's what his name is. And he had all these different women. It was like a cult. You know, people get brainwashed. Sometimes people get brainwashed into anything. You can be married to somebody, and the motherfuckers can brainwash you too. So Carmen, please don't allow your husband to brainwash you into doing something that you don't want to do. If you don't want to have a poly relationship with your husband then stop him right there in his tracks and let him know listen stop fucking talking about this shit because i'm not into it i don't want to hear no more about it now if you want to have a threesome we can do that but we're not about to be committed in no relationship with nobody else except for me and you and if that's not how you want to think to be then you know there's always courts for divorces but we're not about to have no poly relationship that's all you gotta say you can say it nicely you can say it really it just depends on how he coming at you but stand up for yourself stop putting just stop laying down and allowing anything just anything on to happen to you sometimes they be saying like some women are just too masculine some women are just too easy some women are just too aggressive i'm an aggressive person as it is there's a way to go about it and i feel very strongly about my beliefs and how i feel about something and i don't ever like to be uncomfortable in any type of situation i really don't i try to de-escalate shit i try to keep myself out of drama i try to keep myself away from the foolish nonsense i try to stay comfortable as much as possible i don't like being put in any type of awkward situations awkward conversations or any of that i don't be up for none of the bullshit and i just don't know why a lot of people will pussyfoot around and just don't speak up for themselves like it's not that fucking hard if your husband get uptight and get mad at the fact that you don't want to be in a committed relationship with him and another woman then that's his fucking problem and he needs to deal with that seems like a personal problem seems like he doesn't he you're not enough for him and that seems like a him problem not a you problem okay let's not be greedy Let's just do what we've been doing. We've been fine for all these years. We met in college. We've been married for 11 years. Who knows how long y'all been together? But let's not add nobody to the equation, especially when you don't want to be part of that shit. I'm sorry, but I don't allow just anything to go down. I don't allow people to do whatever they want to me. I damn sure don't allow people to say whatever the fuck they want to say to me. Now, you know, listen, I give people grace and I will give you the benefit of the doubt and I'll allow you to apologize. But after you keep doing the same shit over and over to me, bitch, I'm going to explode and then I'm going to go off on you. Then I'm going to let you know, you know what, girl? You just ain't really my type of friend. You ain't my type of skilo. We just can't be cool like that. Deuces. I'm not going to allow people to constantly keep doing something to me. You get your one time, you get your two times. But then the third time, it's a no-go for me. Like, you know what? Hold up. We, we about to stop this shit right here. So speak up for yourself. Carmen, don't sit back and act like you ain't got no mouth. Because I'm pretty sure y'all have had plenty of arguments. Who hasn't had an argument with their spouse? They've been together long enough. And so I'm pretty sure that y'all have had like a disagreement we can agree to disagree straight up the more i think about it the more i'm just like hell to the no no no, no. we're not gonna have a poly relationship so what, what do i think about it? i think that is bullshit i can't really say it's disgusting because i've never been part of one nor will i ever be part of one but i just think it's bullshit that that is me explaining what i think of a poly relationship in a nutshell i think that it's bullshit and i think that people that are in it there's one individual who's strong-minded and there's one individual who's weak-minded okay and that's exactly what it is. And I seem to notice that there are some people that I know that are in poly relationships. And you can always tell the strong-minded person and the weak-minded person who just goes along with any fucking thing. Nah, I guess I'm too strong-minded and level-headed because you're not about to put me in any type of predicament that I don't want to be in. Period. Okay? So, Carmen, what do I think of it? No. Speak up for yourself. Be a woman. Pull your big girl panties on and let your husband know. We're not going to do this. This is not what I want our marriage to be. We have a family. We have children. We are raising our family. And if you have already raised your kids, you have already raised them. But there's no way on God's green earth are you moving any other female in here or she's coming over here to be a part of a relationship with you and I because it ain't going to work like that. So those are my thoughts. What are y'all thoughts on it? Look, I, like I said, I try to mind my fucking business. Everybody has their own preference to each his own. Some men like men, some women like women, some men like women and men, some women like women and men. The world is going crazy. And that's just what I'm here to tell y'all that I really feel like sometimes the world has gone a little bit ditzy and it's okay. You know what I'm saying? That's okay too. But some of the shit I'm just not partaking in. And poly relationships is one thing that I'm definitely not going to be partaking in. Like I said, a lot of things, they used to be behind closed doors. It was taboo. People didn't really speak of much of certain things. Now, today, it's like people have no holds bar. They don't have any self-awareness. They don't care. It's just like, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to put it all on the internet. I'm going to allow everybody to see how I get down and what I do, how I do this, how I steal, how I beat people up, how I do disgusting things. The world, it just seemed like since COVID, the world has gotten worse. I don't know. Maybe it's just more visible. I, I really don't know. But I'm not saying that Polly is worse. I'm not saying Polly is disgusting, but it's just not me. You know, what's? <laughs> it's not for everybody, you know? And Carmen, I, apparently it ain't for you. 
So tell your husband, stop sitting around acting like you a joke and don't know what to say. Asking me my opinion. Bitch, get off your ass and say what the fuck you got to say. Let that man know. Nah, nah, dude, we good over here on a relationship. We married. We... I don't know. Maybe that's for the really young. I don't know what the poly relationship was for. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of like old hippie days, Woodstock. Now, I wasn't during that time. I wasn't around during that time. But you know history. You read about it. You see it on the news. You see what people have done. So, of course, this is what it reminds me of. It. Like, I just feel like it's really came out a lot into the open. And there are a lot of people that really feel like it's okay. I don't know. I'm just not one of those. I don't know if I'm approved, but, you know, I just... It's just not for me. It's just definitely not for me. Um, yeah, that was a subject that I just really didn't want to talk about. But, you know, it's real talk. So it's like, OK, I have to make sure that I please everyone. I'm not pleasing everyone all the time. But if you email me, I'm definitely going to speak upon it. But yeah, girl, that was a little bit much for me. But y'all know, let Carmen know what y'all think about um, what would you do in her shoes? You know, what would I do in your shoes, girl? I wouldn't even be wearing them, okay? Period. But I will leave all the information down below for Dossier Perfume. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this real talk. Oh, God, it was weird. But, you know, I love you all. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up, and I will see y'all in the next real talk.